Okay, next Friday night in, sponsored by Heineken, uh, official beer of Lancashire Cricket, and of course, Emirates Old Trafford. Delighted to have, uh, have some names from the and names from the present, so to speak. Uh, 2011 saw a 77-year drought at Lancashire Cricket. It was broken when Lancashire won the County Championship Division 1 under the, the guise of, um, of head coach Peter Moores and, of course, captain and now head coach Glenn Chappell. Delighted to say that Friday night in this week that's going out over the Lancashire Airways, we have members of that championship winning side. Glenn Chappell, Simon Kerrigan, Gary Keady, Carl Brown, and Stephen Croft. How you doing, boys? Great to see you all. All looking mint on the screen, I must admit. Thanks, Warren. Cheers, Aggie. Yeah, cheers, cheers Warren. Cheers, Aggie. It looks like it looks like a scene from EastEnders. We've got we've got <laughs> the Mitchell brothers. <laughs> 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 we've got Kegsy with with the shortest haircut I've ever <laughs> seen him. And and, so Croft, and Chap, Chap is just looking his cool self as well, and and Crofty's got Crofty's got his carpenter's hat on him with his uh, with his with his ruler in his back pocket again. And are you are you dot cotton? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, she's no, she's in better shape than me. Let me tell you. Right, lads. Well, let, well, let's crack on. You know, it's it's great. That 2011 was was a was a brilliant year, a brilliant year. Like we've mentioned, 77 years since we. Uh, since we won the championship outright at, at Lancashire Cricket, Emirates Old Trafford, and and Chappy, we'll start with you. You were you were you were captain of that side, and uh, and you were at the forefront of uh, of pushing that great set of players to to the success that we had. What are your what are your thoughts and what are your memories about that as as leader? Yeah, well, I remember the the sort of pattern of the season more than anything else. Sometimes people ask me about individual moments, and there were that many. Um, you can't always recall them. Everyone's got the favourite bits. Um, but generally, uh, we started off with a young team that nobody really thought were going to challenge. I think the first, the two years previous, we'd finished fourth both years and we were strong. Uh, but we'd lost a couple of older players and, and we were now down to a group of players who were making their way in the game. Um, but the biggest thing I remember was was the the spirit within the group we were a small squad because we were we were a bit short of cash because the ground was being developed we were playing yeah. away from home we were playing at liverpool and um and other venues um but the small squad and the fact that they were mainly homegrown players of a similar age there was a really good spirit there um and quite early on we mentioned before the first game that i i just felt that because we had a a seemingly lack of experience. We needed to um, establish what we thought we could achieve. And I think everybody thought we could win the league, which, you know, obviously professional sportsmen do that. That's in their nature. They, they believe they're going to be successful. But as a group, as a collective, I think, I think there was a feeling there. Um, and then the next thing is that you, you always need a good start if you're going to, if you're going to beat um, eight other good teams um, and we went from a sort of an excited group who who believed they could achieve something to having if you want a, for want of a better word having momentum and the, the first few games were uh, full of really strong performances and um, tough games the course of the season so many close finishes and yeah. really tight games that were probably won through spirit rather than as the main as the main thing rather than us being necessarily better man for man than the other teams a lot of it was this is nip and tuck against yorkshire hampshire a few others and i think the spirit got us over the line in every in every instance definitely and you meant you mentioned that you mentioned that inexperience uh, mixed in with a little bit of experience and on the spin front as well you know we've got two guys two guys with us that uh that probably matched that perfectly. You know, Gary Keady, who's, uh, who, who was with, with Lancashire for a long time, and, and of course, Keggs, his, his spin twin, two left-arm spinners. Lads, it must, have been, it must have been great for you guys to work in tandem and, and to win so many of them close-knit games that Chappie's just mentioned then. What, what are your thoughts as a, as a team? Keggs, we'll start with you as, a, as the younger of the two. Yeah, well, like, like Chappie said, um, the season started really well for us and 
I think it was was it Sussex's first game? I think I think I remember Keyes getting a five through in that in the last innings, and it seemed like throughout that season Keyes was just on fire. He just sort of every game it was Keyes getting three for four for five for, and I was sort of sort of waiting in the wings if you like with with sort of playing second team cricket and I felt like I was bowling pretty well. I'd had my first season before that in the first team and. I felt like I was ready to go. It was, it was sort of always sort of nipping at Keyes' heels. And um, fortunately, sort of, we got towards the sort of back end, managed to get bowling together and we're putting some good, good performances together. But um, yeah, that, that season, what I remember is just Keyes is just on fire throughout it. He was. Well, well Keyes, was, Keyes has been a great performer, you know, for where, wherever he's played. And, and, and Lancashire, he won so many games to us. And Gaz, that... You know, the pressure of being number one sooner in that, in that team and, you know, leading that line, really. What, what are your thoughts about it? Mate? I agree with what everybody said so far. And for me personally, um, coming off the back of 2010, when I, when I brought my collarbone and, you know, watching a, a talent like Kegsy come in and take my place, I, yeah. was, I was wondering, A, am I going to play again? And, you know, and B... How am I going to get in front of this kid? Because he's quite good. So, <laughs> for me, you know, my performances from 2010, arguably, um, that run of seven games was as good and as, as good as I've ever felt, as good as I've ever bowled. So, going into 2011, you know, we were thinking, who, who's going to get that berth? Because Kegsy's obviously done well. And um, I think that my, my mindset changed slightly that I'm just thankful I'm playing again. And doing well, you know, we'd, we'd got a good team spirit, like Glenn said. We had the right man in, in charge in Morsey, who was driving it. Yeah. And we had, we had a really good balance, which all seemed to come together. And like, like Kegsy said, um, going into the first game, um, we, we, did, we played well. And, you know, we, we stopped for rain and we're thinking we're going to get back on. And we finally did. And the most extraordinary thing happened. Well, I think we... A bit of a bad Jewish stats, but I think we, I think it was seven for twenty-two on arguably one of the best wickets we've played on. Yeah, and it, and it gives a great momentum going into the season. That that's brilliant, and yeah, they, 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 it was a big part, along with other factors, of, of bringing that trophy home, that very very proud trophy. And, and Brownie, Carl, who you know, Carl, one of your one of your best seasons, that championship winning season, you know, nearly nine hundred, nearly nine hundred runs. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, it was. Um, my opportunity really, I, I hadn't played much championship cricket before that year um, and got the chance to bat at, at three um, and managed to keep my place throughout the season. So um, I think I had some really good performances in there, mm -hmm. um, but it was just obviously nice to be involved in that team that was so successful. And Croft, Crofty as well. Again, again, you were you were just short of nine hundred runs um, with five fifties and a couple of hundreds in that game. And then arguably, again, one of your one of your best seasons as a front line batter. Yeah, yeah, it was something I really enjoyed. And personally, I was sort of going through a little bit of a transition period from going from seam to spin. So it was my batting, I had to really work on it and find a a bit of a, a way and method to try and stay in the team, really. And, and Morsey was great for that. Uh, back the sort of ability I had and the way I sort of played and, and Chappie did as well. I remember having some, some great conversations. I still remember now just, just going out there and, and play, play your own game, play your own way. And, yeah, it was a, a bit of a responsibility on me to, to, to get more runs. And, yeah, it was very fond memories of, of that year. And I re really, really enjoyed the the challenge and then just to play with your mates as well. That was a massive part of the year. Uh, we, we definitely got us over those those tight games and we had a, a, an awesome team spirit. Yeah, you, met, you mentioned team spirit and that, that team spirit <clears throat> is really, really evident. You know, he had Morsey at the front and Chappie uh, as leader. It looked like you always had fun. It looked like you were enjoying doing what you do. And the pictures you see now are, are around Emirates Old Trafford of, of you guys lifting that trophy. At uh, at Somerset, a game we'll get onto a bit later. It, it looks like there was always that that fun, fun element there. Is is that is that fair to say? Yeah, yeah, massively. And uh, Chappy Chappy mentioned it before. We were we probably weren't contenders, so that the pressure was off slightly. Really, we, we weren't. We got we got. Everyone thought we were going to go down. Really, in, in the press, we everyone thought we were going to get relegated. So 
we didn't have pressure there, uh, but we've always had a competitive group of players, and even now it, it gets more competitive each year. But I think that obviously turned on some of the lads, and 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 we got a, a, a little bit annoyed that we are, we are better than than getting relegated. So yeah, the pressure wasn't on, but we wanted to prove a lot of people wrong. And uh, yeah, Chappie said that momentum it definitely built up and built up, and we got the ball rolling. Absolutely, which is and the and the rest of history. And Chappie, you um, you know, you you were you were probably well mid thirties during in two thousand eleven. I'm about I'm about right there. And you yeah, yeah, about, right. about, 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 about right. You're there. a bit older than that, Warren. <laughs> <laughs> mid forties, wasn't it? Well, <laughs> what I'm going to say that that it, again, you, you had you had another season where you 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 reached a half century of of wickets leading the attack. Uh, as captain and frontline new ball bowler, did you um, did you feel in that team that you had to lead by example, or is it just something that you, you've always done throughout your career? No, I think in, I think at the start of um, the, the two previous years, um, early in my captaincy, I, I think I did that uh, occasionally, maybe too often, where I was probably more senior than the other bowlers, and I, I tended to sometimes take too much on. Um, mm. The beauty of that year was, I think we had the best bowling attack, although maybe maybe it wasn't recognised. Um, the real strength of the team was when we were all on the field together, um, and the bowlers really complemented each other. So we had we always had seamers who were hitting good areas with good skills. So there was Hoggy and Tom, Sajad Pace, and and we had spinners. We had obviously. Keeds would build pressure with the seamers in the first innings. That was one of his fortes. He could really bowl on any pitches. And, and later on, we had Kegsy, who was a very attacking bowler. Um, we had threats in all areas, but I think that was a real, um, really well-balanced bowling attack. So I didn't, I didn't have anything on myself other than um, I was lucky that I, I stayed fit and I worked hard at my fitness at that point in my career. Um, and I think if you do stay fit, you get better and better. So the beauty I had as captain it was that it came late in my career and I could trust my own game to 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 be fairly strong. So um, the, the beauty about captaincy for bowlers is if you can stay fit and you're on top of your own game, there's a bit less stress because yeah. batters face more more pressure through things that they can't control. You know, you get a good ball as a batter and you're on your way, or you get a bad decision, you're on your way, a great catch and you're on your way, and all of a sudden um, the pressure mounts up. But all I had to do was walk back to the mark and keep going. Yeah. Well, you mentioned before, or one of you mentioned before that, yeah, I think it was you, Chappie, that mentioned that that um, that we played a lot of games away from uh, away from HQ at Emirates Old Trafford because of ground developments and because of concerts. And, and a lot of our games during that season were played at Liverpool Cricket Club, and I think we might have played at Southport. I'm, I'm not quite sure, but Keeds, do, if I can come to you, and and then Kegsy as as bowling spinners, you know, bowling at Old uh, at Old Trafford at that time, it was conducive to spin. It was rock hard. You got bounce. You got a lot of purchase, and you you could build pressure. What's it like for you guys as a spin duo playing at Liverpool? Well, for me first, I think um, Old Trafford's kind of. There's a bit of a myth about it being a turning wicket because let me tell you, I've played on plenty of games where it hasn't done anything. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, maybe maybe later on when I finished, it's, it maybe spun more, I don't know. But I can no, remember playing on some concrete slabs there. <laughs> hey? It didn't. <laughs> it didn't. <laughs> Shane, Shane Warren didn't have any trouble spinning on it. Oh, well, this is true. This is true. <laughs> he had to depend on footholds or... Anyway, all right, okay. <laughs> but yeah, um, I think Liverpool for me was um, always a good place to play. Um, the crowd were always close on top of you. Yeah. Um, the wickets, whatever, whether it had grass on it or not, I always felt that there was going to be a result. You know, the fact that we they won all those games, we still had to play well. You know, we didn't just turn up and, and expect to win. It's mm. we, we still had to play well, and that's the thing. Wherever we played, we um, we had to still put a performance in. Yeah, and you know Southport. I've just finished playing two years at Southport when it does spin. Ironically, the one game against Knotts, um, four spinners were picked in the game, and it didn't get off straight. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, that's but, that's, um, cr that, that's cricket for you. But one game, one game that sticks in my mind about Liverpool, a really close game that Kegsy, I think you 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 performed well at, at that at that match. Can you remember much about that? 
Um, towards the back end, the Hampshire game. Hampshire game, that was it, yeah. There yeah, well, go. yeah. Right, selling. <laughs> I, I can't remember it. <laughs> um, well, I, I just sort of remember, um, well, the bit, bits about that game was that it was sort of, we knew that we had to try and get a win because Warwickshire were sort of ahead of us at that point and we knew if we didn't get if we didn't get a win there that it was basically the title hopes were basically over um because I think the week before um we played or two weeks before we played Worcester um away and I think we well we got we got beat and we I got absolutely hammered um I think they had Kemar Roach who was bowling Rockets but I don't think it was Roach who did the damage it was um was it was it is it Jones? Richardson or Richardson yeah, Jones or Richardson, they did the damage. And um, I think, fortunately, we, we ended up having a week off um, in between fixtures before the next game. And that meant we could sort of get back together as a, as a squad and um, get a week of training in. And the one, one thing that stands out, like, before that Hampshire game was um, sort of Morsey made us... Morsey was always full of the sort of these big ideas and little, 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 little kinks to try and get, your, get the lads thinking in the right frame of mind. And... He, um, he walked in with a lot of envelopes and pieces of paper and he said, um, I want you to write a positive comment about each player in the squad. So you end, end up, everyone in the squad did it and you ended up with 16, 17 pieces of paper in your envelope. And really? So you took you took them home and you, and you read them and sort of my ones were all match winner, aggressive bowler, sort of belief in yourself. And I think that sort of had a little bit of a, a sway going into that game and going into the last two games that it sort of, reset the lads and made everyone sort of believe a little bit in themselves again and know that your mates are still with you and um, everyone's sort of going for the same goal and if anything I think that's what helped us get us over the line in the last in the last two games and it did help as well like you said the, the results that we'd had in like in the lead up to the back end we'd won a lot of close games as well so the lads would believe were, was there that we could get over the line in any situation. Yeah, it, it looked like that. I'm, I'm moving on to the batters with with, with Brownie and, and Crofty. Brownie, you know, Emirates Old Trafford is, is renowned for being a, a good batting place, or it's renowned to be. It's, it's always difficult to, to face the new rock there. But what was it like for you, you know, at the top of the order, um, then we'll move on to Crofty after, of batting at Liverpool for, for the majority of the season? I think, I think Liverpool was a real mix. You could... If the weather was good, it could be really flat and you could get any score on it. Um, but if there was a bit of cloud cover and there'd been a bit of rain a few days before, yeah. you could do all sorts. Um, and it also spun as well later on in the game sometimes. You, so you, you got value for shots though, didn't you? You got value for shots, yeah. But I think, like I say, you could get a real mix of wickets. So you had to be prepared to sort of play on any sort of pitch. Um, and sometimes it was quite hard to tell what that pitch was going to be like. Sometimes it flattened out after the first innings um, and second innings. Uh, it was really tough to get wickets. So we had to, I think we had to try and adapt a little bit um, because we never knew what we were coming up against. But I think that made for some really great games. D definitely great, great viewing matches. And and if if that was the case, Crofty, that that you know you didn't know as a you didn't know as a as a home team what the wicket was going to perform like. It must have been very difficult for for away teams to come there and 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 try and bat on it. Yeah, and I think Keith's mentioned it before when when playing at out ground, you, you, nine times out of ten you're going to get a result if you get half decent weather. So that that was always an incentive that, that there was going to be a result. So. When the momentum sort of started building, it obviously helped us in our favour. For Liverpool, it was a great cricket wicket, really. There was a bit in it. There was a bit there for everyone. And as a batting unit, I think we all stuck our hands up, or even as a whole team. Uh, mentioned some of the stats earlier that all the batters got close to a thousand and a few over it, and, and a lot of the bowlers got to near fifty wickets. And no matter who it was, it, there wasn't that one, one or two guys that that put the, the hand up for the whole season. The whole squad, at some point or other helped with, with that championship, whether it be game one one game and one on the next game. It was a it was a massive collective really and yeah, the batting unit was 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 all about that really, even down to when it got to Hoggy, Chappy and, and Kegs and even Keeds now and then would would block a few at night. But uh, everyone <laughs> put their hands up. 
Yeah, you, be, you mentioned, or one of you mentioned before, that the atmosphere at Liverpool Cricket Club, with the crowd being so so close to you, a bit bit different from from Test arenas, but mm -hmm. to get that atmosphere, that then there wasn't any more or any less people probably than there would be at a Championship game, but because they're so closer, uh, you got that that real that real thought of of excitement, didn't you? Yeah, and uh, obviously, um, at Old Trafford is a massive ground, and and. Obviously, with the same amount of people in and out ground, you're going to get a, a, a better atmosphere, really. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think that's it, it's what that year was all about for us, really sticking together. And I think the fans obviously played a massive part of it as well. Uh, they could they travelled around and got a, a lot what a lot of the grounds where we went, and you do get that sort of intimate feel at out grounds. And we'd obviously had experience with playing there before, whether it be second team or the odd the odd first team game. But we knew knew the conditions well, but. Yeah, the, the outgrounds was, was a massive factor for us as well that year. Brilliant. Chappie, we, got in, we went into that season, 2011 season, obviously you as captain uh, and, uh, and under Morsey. Um, and we had two overseas players that probably at that stage, I'm fair in saying, they weren't household names and there were, they were a bit of research had gone into them. Is that, is that fair enough? Um, well, certainly with Maharouf, we, um, we, we, it wasn't like normal seasons where you'd have your pick of anybody and back in those days we could still still tend to attract an overseas player of high standard and and expect to expect to keep them for a long period of time um <clears throat> but it was more a case of let's search who who could fit for us um mm. and i think one of the keys to the season was um was maharouf's did he get 100 against mendis yeah uh, yeah Smash so at the time, back. at the time, Adunta Mendis was probably in the top few bowlers in the world, real mystery spinner. Um, and I think without his input, I think he would have he would have caused us more problems. Um, and he had great advice for the rest of the players on how to play. Um, and he also went out and got a hundred against him. So that was, I mean, that was his massive contribution to the season. It was a revelation, not as just a player. But I think a good all-round team man as well, wasn't he? Well, I think there was a bit of a joke about his age because he, he said he was 27. <laughs> we all thought he was about 40. Um, <laughs> After one day in the field. Yeah, he used to move around like he'd, he'd actually played for 30 years. <laughs> That's what I say about you, Glenn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, I, but I think he was in the middle of his career um, right then. And he was he was about right. You know, he was... a. He was a good English style cricketer. He, you know, he, he had the skills with the ball. He wasn't fast at all, um, mm. but he, you know, he ran up and hit the seam. He probed around on a good length, and he's probably an underachiever with the bat because his hundred um, against Mendis was real high quality. And he fitted in with the lads. He had a really good sense of humour, and he en and he enjoyed the season. Yeah, lads, you know, Keats, let's come, let's come to you about, about him. Was he, you know, we, we, we laugh in the dressing room and we think you're, you're a hell of a lot of time spent in that dressing room and it's important that the right characters are in there, isn't it? Was, was he good for a, from a teammate point of view? Yeah, he was, he was just like us, really. Just, just fit in with a kind of like a, a like-minded bunch of lads wanting to do well for each other. And, you know, he's, he's got, he got a, a certain amount of pedigree. He played international cricket. Yeah, correct. It wasn't a mug. Um, but like Glenn said, um, at, at that time, at Lancashire had been known to, when you talk about the Murleys and the Wasims of the world, attracting proper high-class overseas players. You know, and um, um, Maharouf comes along, you think, who's this guy? But, he, you know, he was no mug. He had a, he had a decent first-class record and, and had played international cricket. So, but when he, but like he said, he, I think he'd kind of like, got to the second part of his career where he tried to reignite it. I'm yeah. pretty sure Sri Lanka toured that year where he, he, he wanted to put a good shift in the, and maybe try and get back on the Sri Lanka side. Sure. Which, that, you know, he, he had um, a hidden agenda there, if you like, to do well for us, which I, which I think he'd have done anyway. But, yeah, I mean, the, the, like Chappie said, the, the summer set innings for me at Liverpool really, really got us going. And to take a bloke apart on that pitch the way you did was like, whoa, this, this, this guy can play. Yeah, serious. Great, great to hear. Just on, just on Rufi there as well, what, what fitted in with the year as well, I still, still speak to him now, him, him and Sarge, and there's, 
I think it was the last game where Rufian, Rufian missed, actually missed a couple of games and got left out, as did Sadju, who both of them have played a, quite a bit of international cricket. But especially those two, do we, do we still put a shift in, whether they be carrying the drinks or all around the group? Do, did never, did never sulk around or anything. And, and, and it sums, sums them up as people, and especially that year that he was still putting shifts in off the field and, it was great to see as a player, uh, two international cricketers doing that for the club. Well, we've got we've got you five guys who, who are an integral part of that of that championship winning tie. But we, we, we shouldn't forget really uh, other players in in that group that were uh, that were main contributors. Kegsy, you you you're a, you're a bit of a stats man. Can you can you remember other big contributors in that team? Well, I think like well, on the batting front, like um, like Crofty mentioned, it was. I don't think we ever really sort of piled the runs on like, and got a sort of a, a first innings of 500 or something. It was always like the, all the sort of top order and lower order would contribute. But like, I had a look, as you said, of stats, man. I had a little look before I came on and um, like Hawks and um, Stephen Moore, they, they both got to a thousand runs. I think it was in the last the last game they got to a thousand runs. And like I so said, with Crofty and Brownie, um, with sort of nearly 900 each each apiece. Yeah. It sort of, it, that's sort of your top four batters there. I think, I think you, you guys batted three and four, didn't you, Crofty, Brownie? Yeah, I sort of batted three for most of the season, yeah. Yeah. And so it, it, was a mass, it was a real team effort. Like that combined with then the sort of Luke Proctor's sort of lower order, middle lower order runs and um, yeah. like Chappie and, and it, like everyone down the order. It was sort of a, a real team effort. And, um, and that's, that's sort of, what we sort of pride ourselves on, scrapping away and making sure we, we sort of got got to that sort of next passing point or sort of got over the line with games. You you cannot be successful as a team uh, by winning pretty, pretty all the time, and and as you, and as you proved it, then you just mentioned that, that it's a team effort and everyone everyone gets uh, gets involved. But, but Chappie, uh, you know, you work closer with with uh, with Morty, uh, and a really good relationship with him. Um, and what was he like as a as a head coach at the time, and what was he like to to work under? Um, well, he was excellent for me personally as an older player. He, you know, he, he gave me enough enough space. Um, he trusted that I knew what I was doing with my game, and and he helped in every way he could. He was he was certainly never one to shirk any work. Um, and he, he'd always he'd always front senior players up, and you know, make sure they're putting in a shift. Um, he wouldn't let people uh, get to the end of their careers and, and start taking it easy. Um, <clears throat> I think the, the earliest thing I remember was actually two seasons before the first, I think the first game we went out and we fielded for the first session, freezing cold day. Um, and we were just okay, first game of the season, the opposition were, I don't know, 90 for two, something like that. Um, but he dragged me to one side at lunchtime and he said, you can't do that. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, if you let them be like that for the rest of the season, uh, we're going to get relegated. And I didn't really get what he meant. And he just, he basically was saying that our intensity wasn't there. Mm. Um, and he wasn't saying we were particularly bad. He was saying we're just like any other team, just, just um, going through the motions. And it was the first game of the season and he wanted to, he wanted to see some, some edge to us. And it wasn't that he just mentioned it. He, in his own way, he insisted on it, and he dr he drove the team forward. But he, with us, he did it really well, and no one—I don't think anybody—felt that there was anything other than the best intentions and a, and a good coach having a good effect on players. Um, but that stuck with us, and it it built into the team over the course of years. But um, <clears throat> that was how he wanted things to run, and if things were running well, he was really—I mean, he was really positive, and he let you go. And that's the way he likes to work, because then he could work individually with players. Um, and use his energies in that way. Um, but any time anyone's taking a foot off the gas and he was on it, and he would either deal with it himself or he'd get someone else to deal with the captain to deal with it. And and when you operate like that, as long as as long as you've got the players' respect, that, that will be okay. So it takes a special kind of coach to 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 be demanding in that way. Mm. Um, and that's the biggest thing I take was somebody who I enjoyed working with. Uh, still enjoy his company now. We're good friends, um, but also someone you respect enough to to know that you, you're going to have to come to the office and graft and enjoy it. 
you, you just mentioned enjoyment there and whether, whether you're coming in to play a match or whether you're coming in to, to have a net session or a fielding session or a training session. Lads, I don't know who wants to come in there. Let's try Brownie. Uh, coming into work and, in, and enjoying what you're doing is a, is a major contributor to success. Would you say that? Yeah, definitely. And, and just to touch on Mosey a little bit, I think for me, he uh, really helped me as a, as a young professional. Uh, I think uh, he really made me realise what it was to to work hard and what it what what it actually took to become um, a, a really good player and I think he, he got that into me really early and I think um, I was at a point where it could have sort of gone my career could have gone either way and I think I probably owe quite a lot to Mosey and the time he put in with me um, because I, th I think um, he was a fantastic he is a fantastic coach and um, that year he was absolutely brilliant uh, for the lads in the team and brought everyone together. So, yeah, I think Mordy deserves a, a lot of credit for, for the success as well. Yeah, n nice words. And let's get, on, let's get on to that final game of the year, the, the Somerset game. Where we all hinged on, on, on this. You know, who's, who's going to come in? Who wants to talk about and set in the scene for it? Who wants it? He's run out, isn't Can it? I just say straight away, um, I think you talked about it before. Uh, about everybody contributing and I'm sure there's something in the first innings that was something like everybody scored like 20 plus or something something daft like that no I don't think anybody got more than 60 odd but we ended up getting 350 plus maybe Kegs are you though we got 480 oh sorry <laughs> <laughs> wrong game Brownie <laughs> well we were, three, five, six, we were three, five six for six um, overnight, oh no, at lunch on day three, and we were four eighty all out. So that Chappie, just, that just while you're there, like. Chappy, you, you look at you're looking at something in your study there. Do you want to turn your camera around and just show us? Just show us that because I think I, you were showing it just off air before we came on, and I think it's amazing. Just talk us through it slightly. What 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 we're looking at? Right, I'll show you. This final game. We used to do this every game. It's something we drew up on a session by session. There you uh, go. So if you see the top, the top three squares, they're the first, they're the sessions on day one. So at the end of every session, we'd write the, we'd write the scores up, and normally we would put whether we'd won or lost the session. And then at the end of the game, you can look back and, and decide how many sessions you won, and you can review the game. Yeah. And, and normally they'd, they'd last for a couple of weeks and they'd get thrown away and, you know, it'd just be a way to review the game and also keep you in touch with the game as it moves along. Yeah. Um, but this one, um, Mosey very kindly saved it and framed and, and presented it to me. So as a, as a bit of a, a reminder, so it's up in my office now and it's... Um, well, that's that's incredible, and that, that's absolutely incredible. That, that, that it just shows you what a what a game the game that was, and it's it been signed by the lads as well. Can I see? Yeah, all our lads have signed it. Yeah, yeah. down the down the right hand side. That that's a, that's amazing. And let's get let's get back to some of the things that happened, Chappy. That is that is brilliant. That's really good to see. But set the scene. Was that was that Keith? Was that a must win game for us? Did we? Did we what was your feelings going into that match? My feelings going into the game on the on the back of the Hampshire match, um, like when Lad said, we we had to win the Hampshire game to give us any chance, and we did it in the fashion we did it. That gave us like tremendous belief that going into the last game, um, I, I don't think it was mathematically in our hands, but we knew that if we played well and we and we could get a victory, and, and other results went our way, um, you know, we had a chance. And I, I can remember being sat on the field day two. Um, you know, they. I think Hill just got a hundred. They they posted a reasonable overnight score, and it'd have been easy to just lie down and, you know, just it just becomes another day. But because what was riding on it, it was almost like we we can do this, and just as the as the game progressed, um, the the more we played, the more we were in control of the match, and regardless of what was happening in the other game, um. You know, we still had to focus on on, on what we were doing, and and that's the way the the game went. Kegs, any any memories from that game? Yeah, well, like he said, I remember sort of the Hampshire game. Everyone, everyone was sort of 
a whirlwind and like we everyone was sort of jubilant that we're still in in a chance with winning the league and the next I think it was the very next morning we got the coach down to down to Taunton and get a little look at the wicket and you're like but Ellis is flat hope we win the toss and bat mm. and um Chappie lost the toss and we, we were bowling I think and um I think then Chappie your hamstring went in it pretty early on yeah um fifth over I think I I tore my hamstring so I hobbled off um, went to see Sam, the physio, who got the scalpel out, ripped my hamstring out and, and tied it back up like a shoelace. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and um, put some heavy strapping on. And about an hour later, I hobbled back out there. And the weirdest thing happened, because I've torn my hamstring, I must have done 10 in my career. Um, and it was still really sore through day one. But, you know, I'd, it was the last game and just I, I just thought, well, we've got a good attack. We've got enough players. If, if I have to just hobble around and bowl a couple, if I'm needed, then that's what I'll have to do. Um, and it was sore for day one. But it, somehow with the strapping and the treatment and everything that Sam did, it, it seemed to ease off. And I, in the end, I ended up playing a, a fairly decent part of the game. And that's, that's never happened with a hamstring before. Um, and ultimately, I'll never know because we didn't get it scanned. It was the last game, and it was it was full of alcohol by the end of the by the end of the game. So, um, oh, you know, rest. So, but it was a remarkable um, thing that happened. And maybe Sam just got his strap in just right, and it relieved the it, it relieved the problem. But that's what that's what happened on day one for me. Um, and as I think Keith said, at three fourteen for five on day one on in a game at Taunton, which is notoriously flat in a game that we have to win, you go back to the mentality of the players and think not many teams would win from that position at Taunton. So, so Kegs, getting back to you, what happened after that? What happened well, after I, just, that? I just remember sort of that first day, it was really flat. And um, like Keith said, Hildreth and uh, I think it was Joss, who was obviously at, at Somerset at the time, um, were going pretty well after the tee. But I think that the main thing that Somerset's plan was just they're not letting us win they just wanted a draw because sure. I think they were they had it in for us from the year before when um, Knox won the won the league in the, on the last day of the season against us at Old Trafford and I think they felt that they sort of owed us one from the year before and I think that sort of that mentality for them sort of made them bat a lot more defensively than they needed to on that sort of wicket. I think they could have sort of put us under a lot more pressure in that sort of evening session or mm. afternoon evening session, especially with sort of Chappie struggling with his hamstring as well. Um, but I remember coming off that after day one thinking we've done pretty well there because the wicket's flat and we got a couple of wickets towards the end. And I just remember going into sort of day two that I felt I felt that we were in a decent enough position because I was back in our batting to be able to sort of get a score and sort of like it was like say any, we've just got to take whatever chance we can get at trying to win the championship and um I know we're sort of joking about we can't really look at uh, look at sort of what's happening elsewhere but I know all the lads were I think the Warwickshire game was on Sky and all the lads were sort of checking the phones checking the scores having a little sneak into the into the sort of the, the sort of the lunch area looking at looking at the scores and mm. um but yeah, I think like sort of after that first day, um, we're sort of still pretty positive about it, even though they so we've lost the toss and we were sort of three, they were three hundred and fifty for five. And we we batted Crofty. What happened when we batted? Well, first or second innings. First innings. I know we'll, we'll we'll touch on second innings a minute. Just hold your horses. We've got to, we've got <laughs> you and Brown and and Keedy's story yet. Yeah, so yeah, I think it was 480 we posted, and uh, yeah, Brian alluded to it earlier. I don't think there's any massive scores. Uh, everyone sort of chipped in, really. I think Maury, myself, Brownie, uh, just looking at Hoggy, Hoggy, and Ker Kerrigan got 40. I think he put Carl Dick into Morris. Oh, into Morris, and he keeps telling us. Uh, he's framed his bat now, but uh, but yeah, it's sort of typical. Uh, obviously, we'd have liked someone to kick on, but his contributions all the way down the order, and I think we still we still play in a, in a 
in a positive fashion. Obviously, it dictated that way. If we wanted to win the game, we had to push on at times. It was a great platform for us to, to then have another crack at them with still quite a bit of time left in the game. And, it, and if I'm if I'm not mistaken, you know, I was I was you know watching watching the TV, watching the scores, you know, on you know hour by hour. Their their innings was 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 Peter and just just Miranda, meandering chappy. You know, what what was the scores off your uh, off your your stats on your wall? So we had a hundred lead first innings. Yeah. Um, Somerset were one hundred and five for five overnight on day three, so they were five in front, five down. So at that point we. We'd fought our way in, and I remember a conversation. We went for a meal down the uh, down the road from the hotel uh, at a pub, and we were just we were sat there thinking, "Well, at the start of the season, you've got the opposition five down um, overnight, and you need five more wickets, and then you need to knock off what they get. You'd take that." Um, the one thing in Somerset's favour was the pitch was still flat, fairly placid, not doing too much. Um, and I think we were pretty tired. It, you know, we'd, we'd taken a, we'd had a long season, and it was everything we we had left basically. Um, that's where that was. And then, you know, we're going to get to that inevitable moment, aren't we? Where we just couldn't finish him off, and we'd nearly given up. And then some bloke who never hit the stumps in his career, <laughs> so Belden so, so, <laughs> fielded at backward point. Was it backward point, Keith? Um, and I'm at mid on, so I'm back in the throw up, and it was never missing. Um, but we were, you know, if that team never gave up, but it wasn't far off. We were, we were thinking, how, you know, how, how much longer can this go whilst we're still yeah. got to winning? Um, and that, that was the, that moment was literally the point where we just, who was it you ran out? The same. Not NASA. Unbelievable. Not yeah. <laughs> talk us through it, Keith. Come on, it's, this is this is it. Go, talk us through it. What happened? I think I think Glenn's kind of highlight the fact that that's how desperate we were. The fact that I was at backward point. <laughs> spent spent um, spent eighteen years at fine line. <laughs> <laughs> so all of a sudden here I am, um, not quite daydreaming like I used to do. And um, I can remember him just pushing it out. And um, I think that, I think in the context of it. I didn't. I wasn't. I didn't hit the stumps a lot in my career, um, but I didn't often feel in the circle. Oh. But I, but that that winter and that summer, you know, the kind of bloke Morsey is. We every single person in the squad just threw the stumps down, practice, 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 and I I built myself up to a, a decent strike rate, you know, out of ten. I was I was getting up to six out of ten, which was all right for me. And um, you know, it came down to it. Who'd, who'd have thought at that time in the season yeah. you get one opportunity to change a game. Um, and it just happened in slow motion. He, he pushed it out, I ran in. One-handed pick-up I'll have, you know, as well. <laughs> and and, I, and I, knew, I knew when I let go. I, we, I, knew, I knew when I let go, I could start running off. Yeah. All of us ran off. It, I, I, it was all, like we, all of us started running up. off to the pavilion like we're all going to pad up. <laughs> come at the hour, come at the man. You know, it, was, it was a great moment. It was um, just, just so hard to get the nine down. And at, at that point, you know, they had a long partnership for the 10th wicket. Yeah. And we'd yeah, just yeah. thrown everything at them. And we just thought, is, this, is it slipping away? But to just to have an influence on a game like that, you know, you, you talk about games I might have won with the ball. Um, an 18-year career, one yeah. ball in, the, in that entire history sticks out and it was a run out. So. Yeah. Incredible. And then the lads, the lads, the lads did the rest. It was amazing, amazing to watch after that. Well, let's get on to it. We're chasing. How many were we chasing, boys? Can you remember? Chappy off your uh, what yeah. we were chasing, second dig. It's quite handy having that up there. Brilliant. Know, just, just to make it even clearer, Somerset were two hundred and five for eight at lunch, so we're still thinking we're going to win this game. Three hundred and ten all out they were. So the last two wickets from lunch put on one hundred and five. Wow. Um, and then obviously that means we needed 211 to win. 211 to win. Oh, how long left? What was it? 30? Was it 28 overs or something? Yeah, it was a tiny, a tiny bit before, tiny bit before T, and then a session after T. Yeah, we knocked them off in 29.1. So I think we had a few more overs after that last. But yeah, we had to, I think 32 overs to chase them down. But again, like with the sort of the, the sort of. 
the theme of sort of Somerset like trying to do everything to, uh, to stop us winning. They were sort of were walking so slow between overs. They weren't going to bowl, making sure because we bowled obviously a lot of spin, so we were ahead of the over eight. They were making sure that, that they weren't getting any more overs in than, than they had to. And, Time the two laces every two minutes. Yeah, I don't think I think we had Pete Willie and uh, Sharpie as well who were umpires. I don't think they were hurrying them along either. No. <laughs> it, came, it came down to Crofty and uh, it came down to Crofty and Brownie, who stat stat that, that Gaz has given me from uh, for the, the second eleven uh, scorer that, that Brown and Croft average eighty point one four in eight innings together that year batting together. So you had two good lads at the crease who are used to and probably enjoy each other's company and batting together. Brownie, can you remember much about that? Yeah, I, I really enjoyed batting with Crofty. I think we bounced off each other a little bit. Um, I think we're quite relaxed when we try and when we bat, um, and I think that that works well for both of us. Um, so we try and keep it as light-hearted as we can, um, and, and we we obviously had that partnership right at the end there. Um, I can honestly say I felt a lot better batting than I did in the dressing room. Um, <laughs> to, to to sit there and watch that was absolutely awful. Um, nobody could move. I think Hoggy was Hoggy didn't watch a ball. I think Procky locked himself in the toilet, um, and it was awful to watch. It was horrible. Um, but I remember getting out there to bat, and I actually felt all right um, because I could do something about it. So I think to get out there and bat was a little bit of a relief. Um, and then obviously myself and Crofty put a few on. Crofty was already well set, I think, by that point. And we managed to obviously put a bit of a partnership on and, and finish it off after a, what was a brilliant start by um, Maury and Hawks as well. Yeah, and, and Crofty coming to you, finishing that game off um, must have been one of the highlights of your career. Yeah, yeah, massively. And... Brownie mentioned it then, and I think I think there was about maybe twenty or thirty runs to go where we heard some cheers where we thought there must be a draw down the Rose Bowl. So those last few twenty or thirty, whatever they were, it, it just felt so surreal, really. And then at that point, I didn't want to be out there. I wanted to be with the lads and and almost start celebrating as of we, we, the runs were, were going to get themselves really. But and it, it just it was such a surreal feeling, really, and almost have been better if we we're all out there on the field as, as a fielding unit. But yeah. yeah, it was obviously nice to be out there with Brownie. We shared some, some great, great partnerships that, that year and, and, and previous years after that. So yeah, it, was, it, was, it was nice to be out there, but it was, it was such a nice feeling once we hit those winning runs and the lads are on the field. And, and yeah, that's what it was all about, really. Absolutely, and you know that there's five of you there who who played massive parts in that season, and uh, and the great players and the great eras of Lancashire cricket, and and you were you were up there with uh, with everyone really on 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 what you achieved that year, and I think now with the uh, with the fact that that you know you, your careers are where they are, uh, you can all sit back and look with pride and and with absolute pleasure of of being part in a in a championship winning team that will that will never ever be forgotten at, at Lancashire and, and that must be that must be a nice feeling, Kido. It is. And you know, I, I had the pleasure of playing with you, Warren, when I first started in ninety five mm-hmm. and, and Chappie obviously. And the, the calibre of the, the Lancashire teams I played in throughout that my career, um, you know, the the players I played with, the, the list is endless and we never won it. You know, the one day stuff speaks for itself, but we, we always came a close thing with a second. I think I came second about six times. Yeah. And yeah. and then to, to get into a season where we were fancied as the underdogs with a, a mixture of young and old, you know, to, to cap it off towards the end of my career and the way we did it, you know, I, it's something I'll never forget. And Brownie, we'll, we'll, uh, what are your views of playing for Lancashire in that season? Then we'll come, we'll come on to Kegsy. Um, yeah, I mean, being a, a kid that grew up watching Lanx, uh, ju- just to be playing for Lanx was obviously, for me, a massive achievement and something I was really proud of. But to go on and, and win the championship, it's just something that dreams are made of. Um, and the feeling at the end when Crofty hit the winning runs is, I think, a feeling that I will never get again. Um, I honestly can't describe that, that feeling. It was unbelievable. 
Um, and I think I felt like that for about a week afterwards. It just, it was just, I think everyone was just on a high. Um, and especially after getting back to Old Trafford and seeing what it meant to, to the members and everybody involved at the club, um, it was just a real special time um, and something that I think that you've all mentioned, you will, will, will never forget it. Um, so, yeah, just a fantastic time. Brilliant. Kegsy, your thoughts? Yeah, totally agree with, with what's been said. Um, like, like, from that sort of, from me personally, the Hampshire game, the highs of that, and then going into that, the Somerset game, and just the, the sort of whirlwind of what it all was, it's, it's as vivid now as it, as it was at, at, at the time in my memory, and it, it's something that I, you're never going to forget, and um, sort of your, your friends and family are never going to forget as well, and it's, it's the pleasure that it, that sort of, what we achieve brings to, brings to them, and sort of, um, like you still get reminded about it now. People always mention it and stuff like that. And hopefully, um, in, when cricket gets up, up and running again, that the lads who are currently in the squad can can try and repeat it. That that's brilliant. And Crofty, you're still, uh, you, you know, you're still still an active part of, of the Lancashire team. But but you know, you've had you've had uh, success with 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 different sides since. But that must have been a real pivotal time. Yeah, massively for all the points we've we mentioned over the last sort of 30, 40 minutes, uh, the, the team spirit, the, the, the competitive we had, the, the spirit within the squad, and, and Brownie touched on it well, uh, that after, after that game and, and that win to, to see how much it meant to, to our fr friends and family and went around a few of the football grounds and a few of the cricket clubs and we're still celebrating six months later, really. It was, it was such a, a great feeling, obviously. We didn't do great the year after, but that 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 year was just amazing. That seventy-seven year wait was obviously far too long for a club like Lancashire. But going round and and see what it meant to people was was, was so special and stuff you'll never ever forget. That's that's a really good point. And Chappy, we'll we'll finish on on you and it. But you're you know you're head coach of of, of the club now. Uh, and you see what uh, what success on the field means to the rest of the staff around, whether they be conference and events guys, the partnership guys, the hotel guys. It means a hell of a lot, the success on the field for Lancashire. And, and that was no different, was it? No, and it's, it's, it's something that we, we try to use now. And it's certainly something that's affected my, what I want from a team and what I expect from a team. Because I, I just remember the energy that there was on the field, you know, when you're there as 11 people um, and what that can do to an opposition. And what was there that year is what, is what we expect from each other every game, every year. And for the most part, you do get that. We've always, we've always had a good team spirit through for many years. Um, but it's not that easy to maintain all the time. And it's, it's a good reference point to get back to, really. But, it, you know, that kind of effort and and hunger and team spirit doesn't guarantee success. But I, I actually think that you can't be successful without it. So it's, it's the thing you've got to strive for. And all, all sorts of little things affect your, your, your energy and energy levels throughout a season. Um, and I think that particular, some of, the, some of the close wins that we had, what we've just spoken about there, the Somerset game, was actually the easiest win in the end, the, the run chase. If it yeah. wasn't for us all, Sat on, our, sat on our fingers and rooted to the same spot because of how much it was actually going to mean and not and not believing it was going to happen until we needed three or four overs yeah. with wickets left. Um, the actual run chase, because of how well the lads played, Hortz and Maury up front and then these two here uh, later on, it was a doddle compared to some of the ridiculous games that <laughs> induced pylons on the square, you know. Falling over everyone at Headingley when we beat the Yorkies, beating the Yorkies twice in close matches, um, and the Hampshire game where Kegsy bowled them out with nearly with it nearly going dark. They're things that you can't guarantee will happen. That's just something brilliant about the season that that makes it so memorable. But one thing you can't win you can't win sporting um, championships without is that is that spirit and that collective effort. 
Wow. Well, that, that was ab absolutely amazing, guys. And I'm sure we could speak for, for hours and hours of it. But that's some fantastic memories of a fantastic season, 2011 champions uh, after 77 years. And, and Gary Keady, Carl Brown, Simon Kerrigan, Crofty, and of course you, Chappie. Thank you very, very much for your time. Thank you for your memories. Uh, they'll never be forgotten uh, in and around the club. And, and, and likewise for yourself. Uh, great memories. We look forward to seeing you all at, at Emirates Old Trafford. Anytime you, you come back, you'll be etched in the club's history. Uh, and we hope you're keeping safe. We hope you're keeping sound during these very, very strange times that we've got at the minute. But, you know, fingers crossed, um, um, safety will be back very, very shortly. Lads, brilliant. Thank you very, very much. Thanks, 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 Thanks,